All right, I guess I'm just gonna go for it. If I will have published my last video, it should have sucked as I made it on my tablet. But here I have power today. Very exciting. The joys of power. And I'm inspired to share, even though I have tons of things to do. I could be painting, building a new solar panel rack that will hold at least three or four panels. I need to build some stairs up to my loft. I'm sick of using the 10 foot ladder, especially at night when I have to pee. But other than that, things are well. Sorry, I just drank too much coffee at once in one sip. I hope you're all well. Thanks for being here. Today we're going to talk about the destruction of the old world, and very possibly present one. Welcome. So it's always while minding my own business. Here I thought I would watch a recreational video. Let me give him a little thumbs up here. Good presentation. On the Tsar Bomba. What is the Tsar Bomba? It is a hydrogen aerial bomb. The most powerful ever created and tested. Tested means used. It was developed in the Soviet Union by some physicists. And it was tested in 1961 in October right around Halloween. It was dropped via parachute and seems to have been a success. A success for what? A test? Or was there another objective? Also, we know about the Tunguska event, an event that seems to have had an explosion from above leveling a large swath of trees. Is that a word? In very recent times in Russia, we are told a meteor flew in from the random space and it was seen by thousands captured by tons of dash cams people going to work that morning and when it finally hit it was like a giant explosion heard for what seems like at least a hundred miles and very interesting the way this thing resembles a sun just a chunk in the sky of something and yet casting a sun-like projection, showing us how easy it would be to create the effect of a luminary. And I don't know what our luminaries are, but this is very interesting and a side thought. And eventually this thing hit and blew the windows out all throughout the city of Chelyabinsk, forgive me. And such a strong blast from so far away that the glass cut people. People's faces were all cut up that morning. And we must always be careful of what they tell us and perhaps what the actual truth is. And same here with this Chelebinx meteor or whatever. And we always ask why space, why the need to sell us this trillion dollar CGI joke that seems to give us nothing. Well, here is one reason. Now being able to do one thing in one hand, and on the other just blaming random space junk. And what brought this, I don't know, I could only call it a download, fueling this inspiration to share at this moment. So beautiful this morning, it snowed last night, and right now it's sunny as could be, it's so quiet, but really seeming like a download, just a bunch of random bits of information that I've been processing for a couple days. Sorry, I have a frog in my throat. Real quick, I'll show you the Tunguska event. Not very good pictures. I've seen better. So here, I was watching this video this morning, just to kind of relax. This might not seem like such a relaxing video, but it seemed a little off topic and it was suggested to me. But yet everything ties into everything. I've been wanting to share a He-Man breakdown. He-Man, the old action figure. It was done by the old Mud Flood channel. He did a great job of showing how the story of He-Man is the story of our realm. Just to give you an example of how everything compares to everything. But back to this Tsar Bomba. This is in the northern regions, the outskirts of Hyperborea. 
And I've made several videos where we're just noodling around up in the north, looking at artificial coastlines and roads, and what seems like circuitry, and advanced traces of past civilization. And I've wondered if people are still there, if we can go there, all these different thoughts. We wonder what happened to the inhabitants of all these cities that we see on old maps in the far, far northern regions, including Greenland, Iceland, and Friesland. Not only cities existing in Friesland anymore, but not even the island itself, we are told, exists. And here in the 60s, they dropped the biggest ever. I have a big spider crawling in my view. I think I'll just let him be. I don't like when they run around. If they would just stay in one place, I think it would be easier to accept. And I do accept if they stay in one place. In my other little house, which has now been taken over by my cat, I have many spider webs in the corners, like I'm a witch. But I think they have a place, as long as they don't get too aggressive. But here on the Google, I think I have found this island where this blast occurred. Right up here in this region that we're so interested in. And this guy, Forrest Haggerty Channel, is the one that put this out. Excellent work. Was showing us last zone. And here it is. Here is the exact particular spot. I don't know what's wrong with my trackpad. And it made a lake. We've often talked about such things. All that is left. And here right off the get-go I see this circle river. Another little river cutting through. And then the blast. Again, in a past video I showed Moscow and the Kremlin. And very similar with this river running around it. Smaller one cutting across. In fact, most cities seem to have this canal system, and I don't think natural at all. And here again we can see it, the spot where it was dropped, and there's that spot again. So actually it's inland from this town. I can't even believe there's a town here. I'm gonna resist my urge to zoom in. And he shows you the blast radius. And he was saying that the blast radius was 60 to 100 miles. And it was known. I mean, these tests have been performed and the data has been shared. And outside of this blast zone, outside of this outer ring here, where he has his pointer, any human not protected by a hill or mountain would incur third degree burns. And any windows would get busted out. And that's when the arm bell rung for me. And again, brought me back to this supposed meteor strike and how it was so far away. And yet this town got rocked. All their windows busted out, injuring and some. And it just made me think, are these campaigns still going on? Here we're told of this one. And again, this is the world's biggest. How appropriate that up here in this Hyperborean region, they tested the world's largest We are told, who knows how many more have been used and simply blamed on meteors or given no explanation at all. And what is this region? This is the region that we see labeled as Tartaria on the old maps. How appropriate. The region where so many islands disappear on modern maps and on this BS map. And what do they call this? The Tsar Bomba. Come on. The Tsar. The Tsar of what or who? All the Tsars. And some of the largest campaigns in history or bombing campaigns were done in both Vietnam and Laos, Cambodia. And I think we could just look at all of these sites and find old lore and legends and mysteries lending to past civilizations. Here at the Plain of Jars in Cambodia, one of the largest 
blaming campaigns to have ever taken place, just around the clock blaming for months, around the clock. And we have these massive jars out here in ruins, but what the hell would survive? And they're giant. These are giant jars. Some people have said that they could be berries from giant trees, and they could be. But they really seem like jars, especially when they have lids. But I don't know. Whatever was going on here, the military found it important to burn this place around the clock. I mean, after a few days, any people would have been gone. What need to continue burning for months on end? Of course, we have our own share in the U.S. The military just dropping way too many bombs in what we are told were the wasteland deserts of Nevada. Here we have a 1,300 square mile zone that we are told was a test site. And I just simply ask, are these all strategic events designed to erase our history? When we look at Shima, we see a glorious city. Greco-Roman buildings, architecture seen all over the world, and we see it completely leveled. And in fact, this is exactly where the bomb hit. And we still see traces of the old world, the footprint. And even here, this is a glorious building that actually survived. Amazing old worlder, right underneath the site. Let's park the man here and maybe I could show you. What bastards giving me a nighttime view. But here she is. Here she is in her glory. And they failed to completely destroy everything. But the civilization that was here, and even the ones that may have existed out here, have probably been completely decimated. And very sad to have learned about this Zarbba and really explaining a lot. I feel like, at least for me, I hope... I've made a decent presentation, but I'm never sure. I think I'll just end with this recent discovery. This article is five days old. An amateur archaeologist have just discovered ruins off the coast of the St. Bernard Parish. And here we can see it on the map behind the news anchors. And there we are, right off the get-go. Popping up out of the water. And we just see what seems like swampy wastelands and we see new orleans to the west and out here to the east we see these islands like a kind of crescent and let me show you on the google earth that would be down here i believe it's this one here this crescent and i believe these would have been ancient or not so ancient i gotta stop saying that canal systems Otherwise, there's no reason for this river to not find a quicker route to the sea. But back to my point, they're finding ruins out here. And we know that this looks artificial. This is an artificial coastline, but it's just out here where there's no people. And it's one thing for some person like me to just say something like that. But when it begins to make mainstream that archaeologists have discovered something... Of course, their timelines will be off. They know nothing about timelines the way we would in this community. But nevertheless, let us all work together. Here they tell us there's a pyramid out here. A lot of artificial stonework under the water. The parallel is the same with the Pyramid of Giza. Moving in a horizontal line. Here we can see him holding a very rounded piece. And this kind of looks like my little chunk of the Palace of Fine Arts. So very exciting. It is my belief that the truth wants to be known. And yes, people like us in our community are inquisitive and often pioneer these kind of ideas. But my point is that truth wants to be known. And eventually even the laymen, or in this case amateur archaeologists, stumble upon this puzzle piece, a very important one, and it gets shared with the masses. And after enough such events, the truth is like some giant elephant in the room. And it doesn't matter what anybody would try to have you believe about. The truth eventually is simply 
known. And now I'm going to take Chief on a walk. Thank you for being here. Have a blessed day. I love you all. And I'll see you next week. I feel like I have no rights to talk about this. I'm no expert. Only recently, I've been introduced to a concept on what I would call a healing technique. Healing of the emotions, of the mind, and ultimately the heart and the spirit, which I believe we have. And this technique was shared by James Brockhurst, thank you James, via another channel, and I thank you as well, the channel that he shared. And the technique had some title of Language Lessons of the Heart. And whatever with titles. Forget about titles. Just used to reference a technique in this case. And I think the problem with everyone, including myself, is we run from our emotions. And we are taught to usually bury our emotions. Continue to do your job. Continue to walk forward and not pay notice to your emotions. We are a culture of the mind and of principles and ideals. And we're taught to bury these emotions and we do it to ourselves eventually. Eventually, we don't need to be told. And we might either just repress them completely, burying them, forgetting about them, or you could just escape your emotions or try to you may think you're escaping your emotions and this could be done with different substances or distractions as my old psychology teacher used to call them and i've found that this could be anything this could be biting the inside of your cheek or fidgeting with something it's constant we are constantly escaping or distracting ourselves from our emotions and rightfully so they're very painful and i typically live my life very low-key very emotional but not showing it externally at least in public sometimes but when it comes to unpleasant emotions i have been the type to actually physically flee escaping physically I'm realizing, it's pretty clear, when I look at my life, that's exactly what I have. I'm on a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, and perhaps this is a little extreme. And as much as I believe in the ideology behind why I have moved off-grid, I can also see that I was pushed by my emotions, or perhaps my inability to deal with them and the conflicts of the world. And again, I think we are taught to not run from our emotions, but to bury them and to perform our function in the world, whatever that might be, parenting, a job, a career, any kind of relationship. And back to this language lessons of the heart, the complete opposite approach is taken. Rather than run from our emotions and You'll find them right away. I mean, if you're a cheek biter, as I am, you'll find yourself biting the cheek. And now you know that you have this emotion. And if you stop biting the cheek, the emotion will surge. And you don't have to know what it is. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. But you embrace it. You actually hold it. And you allow it to move through you. This reminds me of the expression the Benny Gesserit expression in Dune of fear being the mind killer and I'll let it pass through me and whatever. But this is now being used for any emotion, especially the unpleasant, which is what this talk is in reference to. And the idea is that we can honor these feelings and not sabotage our lives, our health, our happiness by repressing these emotions. We can actually feel them 
And magically, seeming, they pass, and you are left with a residual high vibration. And I've been experimenting with this for several days, and it's actually pretty mind-blowing. Something I wish I would have learned, something our culture is not teaching. There's no classes. Most parents will not teach this to their children. And I believe this is new knowledge to us and most likely ancient knowledge coming back to the surface. We don't even understand ourselves. We don't even understand diet. As I've come to realize with the Dr. Gundry diet, the doctor, heart surgeon, leading in the world, expert in his field, now revealing that lectins, a product found in wheat, rice, corn, potatoes, and many other foods, are actually toxic. These lectins, similar to the ricin poison, which is simply a powerful lectin found in the castor bean. These same lectins in smaller concentrations and potency are in all of those foods I mentioned. The staple of most people. Most people are poisoning themselves unknowingly by foods that seem wholesome, that we've been taught are wholesome. An ancient Chinese medicine could have told us this and did tell us this. For instance, the toxicity of the nightshades, which include tomatoes. And yet now modern science is catching up and we're just discovering how to eat. And how many years will it be before we discover how to tame and utilize our emotions, not have them work against us? And the idea is that we feel these emotions. We feel them and we sit with them and we honor them 100%. And what happens is they pass. And again, this wonderful feeling is replaced and it's become kind of fun. What a tool. Instead of just acting on these emotions, which most of us know is the worst thing that we can do, only complicating things trying to find a solution without first processing the emotions. First, we should process the emotions, and then the solution will become more apparent when our vibration has returned. And again, as I've mentioned, I'm a runner, an escaper, physically. If I didn't like a setting, I would just gracefully slip out the back. And this is me always disappearing eventually, or certainly avoiding things in the future, certain engagements. And here, for example, what prompted me to finally record, even though I've been practicing this for days, and again, we've been living in a strange reality with primitive customs, not understanding anything, in my opinion. And experimenting with this technique, I found myself looking forward to a strong emotion, where usually I was completely trying to avoid them by all means, and would be bothered by anything. And the nature of this matrix reality that we live in is that it will throw things at you constantly to seemingly disrupt your flow. In the last few days, and as much as I could remember to today, I have been embracing these emotions. And one example was a police behind me. You know that feeling? And eventually I embraced the feeling and forgot about him and looked in my mirror and he was gone. And today I had a very heated conversation with somebody. Very, very, very heated. And after I hung up, I felt like my head was bouncing all over the place. Their energy was 10 times that of mine. Not what I would like to be exposed to on a regular basis. And because I'm new at this, I 
took a moment and then remembered my new training. And again, I felt like my head was bouncing all over the place and just wiped out from this conversation and almost didn't know how I would approach my new technique. And finally I said, well, how does this really feel? What exactly can, can I describe the sensation? And the sensation, once I really focused on what exactly the sensation was, it was like a million little pokes, as if someone were taking their hand, all of their fingers in, in a poke and poking me from all directions, all directions, poking, 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 poking. And then I began to laugh and I'm by myself and I began to laugh. It, it morphed into a funny feeling and I laughed again and then I got up and I thought unbelievable and I hit record. I thought I have to share this because it's so profound. It's so understandable to everybody. Everybody goes through the emotional roller coaster. And yet very few people have the tools, and if they do, they're not either sharing them or making them available. And perhaps it's like the old adage says, when the student is ready, the teacher arrives. And in this case, I feel blessed to have come across this rabbit hole, I could call it, because I did just plunge down the rabbit hole and... There's about three people that are sharing this information. And like I said in my last video, sometimes we just need to give something a name. So that's it.